Okay, welcome everyone. Today, I have a very special guest in the building. This is the Steps to Success podcast hosted by myself, Delroy Gill. And I have a living legend with me today, Mr. Lonnie Porter. Um, I just want to give him a quick intro. I We could do the entire podcast um, just on his accolades and his achievements that he's accomplished. Um, but just a few um, that I want to bring to attention. He has 538 Colorado wins in college basketball, which is the highest ever at Regis back-to-back championships, um, Adam State College master's degree in education administration, Hall of Fame um, at his college, married for 25 years, uh, a seven-day hero award winner, and the most caring coach award uh, by USA Weekend magazine, which is, I think, a great segue into who he is, Mr. Lonnie Porter. Uh, thank you, Delroy. <laughs> thank you for those very kind words. You're much too kind. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank you for being here. Um, I just kind of wanted to really showcase like everything that you've done in a small bubble, if we can. We got to, there's so much, so much, so much. You're you're literally like a living legend here in Denver. But I wanted to kind of take it back just a moment and before we get too much into what you're doing today. Okay. And kind of what you you have a charity, uh, PBLA, the Port Billups Foundation. Um, but before you got there, when Lonnie was 20 years old, let's just say. <laughs> well, tell us your mindset at 20. You're in college still. Like, what, what were you thinking about starting your charity? Where, where were you at with everything when you were 20 years old? When I was 20 years old, let me see, my thought process would not have taken me to uh, founding my, uh, my charity. Okay. And where I was then, I was concentrating on trying to graduate. Uh, because that um, that was not 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 easy. Yeah. Because I had my mind set that I wanted to graduate a little bit early so I could work on my master's. So I had to carry a very heavy load, and um, history was uh, was my minor, and education was my major, and so that that was a process within itself. Okay. And so I really wasn't thinking about that. I was just trying to graduate when I was when I was twenty. Probably was thinking more about basketball and trying to win a few championships as a player and those types of things. But where my where I started with all of this with this journey was probably when I was about twelve years old and I was in grade school at okay. school number four in Indianapolis, Indiana, and uh, a rough rough area of uh, of Indiana of Indianapolis, and uh, it was. It was just pretty tough, just surviving, yeah. you know, in those days. But the main thing is where we're going with that is the education piece. And that I was, uh, when I was in the seventh grade, I was student body president. And not because I was an A student, uh, but because I was popular. Okay. And so... What, 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 what made you popular <laughs> at that time in seventh grade? What, what was Lonnie doing that made him but, popular? Well, <laughs> I'll give you a hint. I can't tell you all of it. <laughs> but, uh, uh, you know, I like to, uh, to go to the various little functions okay. called parties. Right, right, right. And all of that. And I could dance. Okay, you had a two-step. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. How did you know? The two-step was, that was there. That was them swinging and all, all those good things. But I had a good time, so I was popular, and so I set up a little campaign, and uh, I won the won the uh, won the election. Anyway, I had had some little little ladies that uh, helped me with that. They were singing my theme song, yeah. et cetera, et cetera. But that brought me to to the point of trying to help others. That's where I'm going with that yeah. with this because at that time. Uh, like little kids that were going to school, like me, that were poor. We didn't have, uh, you know, recess. We didn't have the money to pay for the milk and cookies. Right, right, right. And things like that. And so it's very important that your audience, uh, the young people know uh, this about me and what brought me to that this point. And I didn't forget you know where I came from. What what was like when you said you know is is a rough area mm-hmm. and you know stuff was what was like 
something that stood out? Like, was there a time you ever thought like, man, this is bad. Like, this is this is not okay and I don't want to be here. Was there anything that stood out to you at that time? Yeah. Uh, one morning I was carrying my papers. I carried the morning paper. And you carried the morning paper if you were cool. You carried the the afternoon paper uh, if you weren't cool. Okay. In the morning paper, you carried see, the little girls. They couldn't see you. Didn't see you carrying papers. It wasn't cool to have a paper out. Okay. And so, but you needed money. Right. And so I'm coming around the corner, and I hear pop 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 pop, and I said, "Oh man!" I knew immediately what it was. It was gunshots. Right. And so I ducked back behind behind a wall of this building. And I came from behind the wall, came out, and a man, a gentleman named Mr. Golly in the neighborhood. Everything in the neighborhoods were different then. Everybody knew everybody, protected everybody, was mm -hmm. with everybody. And he said, he says, Lonnie, he said, you know who that is, don't you? You know. And I said, no, Mr. Golly, who is that? He said, that's little Stevie's mother, you know, and she was dying her last breath. And I could, I could see her dying her last breath. And... I said to my mother, I said, I have to, I've got to, mom, I got to get away from here because I was 12 and I could see it then. Wow. I knew if I would get caught up in that environment that, you know, neither I was going to penitentiary or, you know, I probably would, you know, a good chance of getting killed myself. Okay. So from, so from that then, where did you said, you said it's not at 20, but what was the point where... After that, you were like, "I'm now. I'm. I'm getting into college. Like, did you, did you, did you at some point have like a five, ten year plan, or has this been like all organic? Or no, you just started, kind of been. It started you know, when I was twelve. Yeah, it started when I was twelve. The whole thing. The whole thing. So wow. I was twelve, and then you know, I asked my mom, could I leave?" And she says, "Oh no." She says, "No, nah, you better, you know, stay here." And so this, I got cut. When you, the, when you, you asked him to leave when. Excuse me. How how old were you when you just said, "Oh, I was asking I was, to leave." I was fifteen. You were you wanted 15. to. You already knew you were, had a you ten were... year plan when I was fifteen. Wow. When I was fifteen years old. Uh, I got cut from the basketball team. It's Christmas Addicts High School. Yeah. Christmas Addicts High School at that time was the number one team basketball high school basketball team in the nation. Yeah. And Oscar Robinson played there. He is a living legend. Some people said a perfect pro. Okay. But uh, I got cut from the team. And so that Christmas night, remember it like it was yesterday, I, I said a prayer. I have a strong belief in God. I don't wear it on my, on my sleeves, but I do believe in God. And I prayed to him. I said, Dear and the Father, please help me remove me from this, uh, my surroundings. Mm. And if you do that, I promise you, 10 years from now, I will get back on my knees and pray and give thanks to you. Wow. Ten years from then, I had transferred to a little town in Iowa, East Waterloo High School. So I left my home. I left. I was on my own when I was 16 years old, and I was staying with my aunt and uncle in this little town. There, from there, I went to, I graduated, played basketball, graduated, went to college, a little Adam State College on Alamosa, Colorado, <laughs> graduated in 10 years. I was teaching, and I was coaching basketball at Manuel High School. That all happened in ten years. Wow! It all happened in ten years. So, so really, would you say you everything you did, you kind of like visualized it, like exactly. T tell tell me about exactly. that process of like being that young and like visual. Like, what is the thing? Because I have that. Like, I mm -hmm. I probably would say for me, it probably started when I was probably about like 14 as well like you just start visualizing and sometimes like you visualize so it's like you can feel it like you can feel like right. you're already there right in the situation and then you some but sometimes at that point you don't know how you're gonna get there but you're like i know i will be there i will be there i will be there yeah so for you what what did it feel like like you know, were you telling people about this or you just kept it inside? It was or? inside. Yeah. It was inside. I'm not a braggadocious, you know, person. I yeah. didn't I didn't get that until later on later <laughs> on in life. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> I got that. Yeah. But let me go back to one other point. Yeah. Was that when I was twelve years old, when I won the presidency, mm -hmm. I changed the policy in the school about not giving little poor kids and I was poor, mm -hmm. you know, free lunch. You oh, know, okay. And uh free uh recess milk and cookies. Because they used to make us 
when other kids would eat their free uh, cookies, milk and cookies, we would be, put our heads on the desk. You know, as the teacher would tell us, put, put our heads on the desk so we couldn't watch other kids eat. Yeah. So I got a program, started a cleanup program. Everyone that worked with the cleanup program got free milk and cookies. So what? Like, I was 12. What's, yeah, what? But you're 12 years old. Like, what's making you have the passion or, like, the compassion to do? Like, what is making you? Because, obviously, there's a bunch of kids at your school, right? You're not, you're just a student, but you're, right. like, thinking way ahead. Like, what do you think that is that kind of made you feel to do? Like, what, what was in you to do that? I've always had an inner feeling that uh, I felt very good when I helped other people yeah. from the time I was a little kid. Right now, some of my buddies, when we were in grade school, I don't know who owe each other the most money <laughs> <laughs> because we would pay for pay for stuff Just for give each it, other. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's that. That's it. Wow. That's it. So is it is it something where like because obviously you're you're also in a in a sporting environment, mm-hmm. right? So right. it's a very competitive right environment too. So did it? You know, was there was there a change or a shift in in when you're playing sports versus your personal, or did you carry the same kind of um, compassion on playing sports too through your players, your teammates? Were you the one that was on, you know, the sidelines when when it's huddle time, boosting everyone up, or were you different when you were playing? I wasn't on the sidelines. I was always the. Well, ca- not, I was when, always, when it was a timeout. Was when always, it was a timeout. <laughs> I was always the captain, dog. <laughs> but, uh, oh, so you were the ca- exactly. I was always the leader. You you were already a leader even on right, the court, right. and and in so that is kind of carried through. In everything you've everything done. Everything I've done. Do you, do, does that ever come with like a pressure where you feel slightly overwhelmed? No. I love pressure. Really? I thrive on pressure. Wow. I love it. There's, what is? There's never been a time where Lonnie's like, man, I, d- I don't know if I can do this. No. There has to have been that moment. Never. No. Every no. time you no. know. Right. Wow. Just like I know it now with my kids that we're going to be successful. I'm going to get the money to take them through. I'm going to get the money to bring them to the house. So tell, I know so, that. So tell me now. So going in into what what you just said into the house, we're talking about the house of PBLA and the building that now has a footprint of Lonnie Porter forevermore. I would say, and that is at Regis University. And uh, with those kids, so kind of tell me, first of all, what was the, the the real spark when that actually started completely from the very beginning of you know that conception of how did it all come together? Because we kind of know now you're one hundred percent a caring, compassionate person. That's just your way of being. So how did that now translate into something that's an actual program and has a structure around it? Okay. It uh, it started uh, in reality 1996, but prior to that, I know that if I had not been a basketball coach, I would have been a headmaster or a um, a principal of a high school or something like that. Or I would have had along the way, if I had ever had the uh, the funds, I would have loved to have had my own school. Wow! And that's that's that was. Uh, that was something that I wanted to do, but I had this dream of becoming a basketball coach, and uh, that was my that was my first love, you know, at that time. But I coaching my basketball teams, um, especially in in college, I just I just saw the need that they had uh, for there were so many areas they were lacking. And then you have like general stuff that they didn't get, uh, they didn't get in school, you know, like life lessons, etiquette, uh, just just simple common sense stuff, how to interview for a job, how to dress, you know, for for a job for an interview, how to articulate themselves, you know, during that during that time, and and I I knew from the readings from my experience that if you get a young person when they are very young and you educate them, give them uh, all the tools that they need. And everything I've always felt was through education. And it wasn't really basketball. It was like education Mm -hmm. that we get 
young people that are at risk of not graduating from high school yeah. or college, um, they can be successful. And and, and I, I think that just to just to sure. jump in on on one of the points is that I think a lot of the times maybe if they've heard about PBLA or if there's something mm-hmm. where they've come in contact with it, some people might assume that it's a sports yeah, kind of right, right. foundation of a program. And I've visited the campus, which was a life changing experience for me. Um, going there and seeing, but everything you just said, it's very much kind of tell them the the curriculums and stuff that you've created and what and why did you decide to stray away from what would be to us your passion from the outside looking in like he's sports, he's basketball, yeah. that's what the programs probably would be about. But you saw a completely different need, and it's still re- basically to us now we know you want to make impact and, and change lives right. um, is your greater purpose. So what what made you go in that direction for it fully being academic? Well, uh, I, I, I felt that that was the way to go. That was the way to go. And uh, later on, we'll talk about, uh, you know, Chauncey, you know, Jonas, because he's, you know, he's big basketball did the world for me. Mr. Chauncey changed, Billups, no, Mr. just Bix. in case. They- <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but uh, yeah. it, it cha- changed my entire life. And But you get a little kid, take a little kid when he's six, seven, eight years old, mm-hmm. and you, you groom him for life. You discipline him. You start him when he's very young, and that's what we do at the, at the PBLA. Then you can change lives. You can change generations. Yep. You know. You know through that process, and that's way. That's that. That is the route to go. That's the way that and, I felt is and, the route to and go. And you have actual facts, and I don't know if you probably know them off the top of your head because you've told me them before. But just in in general, what are you know, the, the stats that are out there versus just public high school kids and going through the system versus actual kids that are coming through the PBLA uh, program and entering into the high schools, colleges, workforces. Like what, what difference are, is happening in the kids' lives that you can actually show facts for? Right. The, the percentages that, that we have, first of all, 100% of our kids that have started a good first class graduated in 2002. We started in 19, 1996, and we had 22 kids. Uh, the first class graduated. It's grown since then. Now we had 202 kids that uh, attend the academy. The first class graduated high school, uh, graduated from the academy in 2002. A hundred percent of our kids have since then. A hundred percent have graduated from high school that finished with us. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. You know, have graduated. You know, from high school, and we have graduated 160 kids from the PBLA. 29 of them alone have graduated from Regis University, and the ones that go to Regis Regis University, they are given full tuition and fees they're paid for now everything is paid for they don't pay a dime it uh, costs roughly about a hundred uh one thousand fifty one thousand five hundred dollars <laughs> for each kid yeah. to go to well, the, the academy the, in the, the summer scholarship is a little bit more scholarship than that. is <laughs> it, it comes out to about about oh roughly about forty three thousand dollars a year yeah and we are a little different than most places uh most organizations that uh, forty three thousand dollars we are responsible for every year for four years. We just don't give a kid X amount of dollars and send them on the way to college. Right. But um, now take note that the ones that don't go to Regis, we don't, we're not paying, we don't pay for that. Mm-hmm. Someday we like to have enough funds in the coffers to pay for that. That, yeah. would, that would be awesome. Someday that soon. Would, that, Someday that soon. would be awesome. Definitely. So, so everyone that is. It, you, you're basically crushing the numbers of kids when they come through mm-hmm. your program versus that they're out in the general public right. already. And is that, what What would you say that is due to? Like, what are you guys doing in your program to make kids come out into the workforce, into college, into high school 
Where where is their mind when they come into the program? Where's their mind when they leave? Okay, Del he's Rock. smiling when he's got. Oh, a big that's smile. easy. That's easy. That's a big fan. <laughs> that'll take you when you were seven, eight years old, and yeah. you have me as your as your drill sergeant, you know, so to speak. Okay, okay. And it's a no nonsense program. Uh, when we take young people, they have to, and just so much to tell, and I don't want to, you know, just bounce around, uh, but it's so much to tell in a short amount of time. Sure. Take, take you from seven, you're seven, eight years old. Yes. Okay. We show you love. We show you love. Okay. We are there for you in your corner. Yeah. We help you every summer. Okay. We have a liaison person. We have a recruiter that recruits you, that a liaison person stays in contact with you year-round, okay? If you cause any problems at home, young man, young women, okay, all the parent does is call me, and I will come there and address that issue, okay? If you're missing school, okay, I will come to school, and we have carte blanche to come and talk to you during school hours. I will come and talk to you. And if you've been... A bad boy, you know that it's not going to be a lot. You're coming to talk to yeah, me. Yeah, 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 I'm, I'm to, nervous to right now. To you. I'm coming to talk to you. Yeah. And, and so, but but that everyone like I'm a taskmaster, and so everyone at that time they're like, oh man, Mr. Porter, you know, and da 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 da. And they don't know until later on in life that that discipline is really the love that I have for them. And then at some point, a light goes on. Mm-hmm. And they say, we don't want to let PBLA down. We don't want to let Chauncey down. Yeah. We don't want to let my daughter, Ms. Porter Bentley, down. And that connection there. And the parent know that they can count on us. Yep. And so now you have that. And you say, oh, okay, I'm going to be all right. And and just, I've seen it in the flesh. I came there, and, and I'll tell you how much Mr. Lonnie Poor is engaged in with his students. I, I was there for the graduation. Right. I think there was almost, how many kids were at that graduation total? That, that, that graduated? Yeah. Uh, was, that graduated, there were 18 that graduated. One was Well, a, from the oh, program, in the room. Total, in, it was in the like room. like 200 plus people, plus parents, Kids, right. it was a packed, packed room. Probably packed. 350 people Easy. total, maybe more. Right. And Lonnie was on the stage doing his speech, and there was a young boy way in the back who I think was giving a little bit of chat. And Lonnie literally looked out of the corner of his eye and said, Guys, you need to calm down over there. I didn't even see the person talking. <laughs> and I was like, how did he know they were talking? Over? And and I, and then I saw the boy sit up straight, hands on his lap. And it was like, wow, this guy is fully aware. He knows these students by name, every single one of them. He's there. He is like everyone. It must be almost like an extended family. It like is. that's that's the it way is. it looked it when is. I came down there. The true expression of what a village is. Yes, it is. This is an extended family. And, and, and that goes, so you have family yourself that's helped you and, and working with you oh, at yeah. the program, right? Tell us kind of who's right. involved and, and then we'll get into kind of when Chauncey came in too. But. Okay. Uh, no, like, like my daughter, Stacy Porter Bentley, uh, she is the uh, director. She is the uh, director and she takes care of all of the, she has a master's uh, in education also. And she is uh, 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 connected. She's administrator with our Adams 12 school. And she is doing a, doing a great job out there. But she does a great job for us. We have a, just a tremendous supporting, you know, group of people that work with us. Yeah. We go from three when we first started. Myself, my daughter, Miss Costa Grande, okay, started the academy. And now we have like 28 people, you know, that are there that are working you know, yeah. in the uh, in the academy. So was your daughter with you when you originally yes, started PBLA? Yes, she was what, what was that conversation like with you and your daughter? Was it like she was going, she was ready to jump in with you? Or she was like, Dad, you're doing it enough? Like, what was, nah. you know, where, where, how was that No, about? she was totally ready. Oh, she was she ready. She was totally ready. She'd always been a teacher. She was a young teacher, you know, in, great, in, uh, in uh, elementary school and Denver Public Schools. And she was, she was totally ready. Okay. She was ready for that. So just, and then... Just so everyone knows, there's, there's a, there's growth, there's work. Like you had to have had a solid passion to do this because 
there's literally what 10 years of you you're in your core doing this before Chauncey's around before the lights camera action and you guys are on the ground you're you're bringing people in you're running this program you're giving back to the community and then how did the connection between you and then Chauncey come about 10 years after you've already been putting in a lot of muscle into the program okay I knew I knew Chauncey's father okay uh and like I'm jumping around here I go I know I, I'm an old dude, okay? Hey. I knew Chauncey's father when he was 12, 13 years old. Okay. And uh, and I had heard about his father, and he didn't end up playing for me at Manuel High School. He was at East. But he had told, I saw him one day uh, at, a, at a basketball game, Chauncey's father. Mm-hmm. And he had this little kid with him. Okay. And, and so we were talking basketball. And we were having a good time talking to basketball, introducing me to this little kid. This little kid was his son. He says, my son, Chauncey. So he's eight, he was eight or nine years old. And he said, he's going to be good. He's going to be good. You know, and I said, yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> I said, yeah, right. And so this little kid is just staring up at me, and I tell it to Chauncey now. And I told the story to him, uh, you know, a few months ago we were talking again. And he was just staring up at me. And never did took it. Never took his eyes off of me. And it seemed like he never blinked. And I said, "Oh man!" I said, "This little kid is different. There's something special about him." Yeah. Did I know that he was going to be a great basketball player? The answer is no. Did I feel like he was going to be something special? The answer is yes. Mm. But there was something there. There was a connection. And then you look up. You know, twenty some years later. You know, we are working together. Yeah, wow. You know, and and so it was like I got the message in the hood that, that uh, he was uh, he wanted to talk to me, <laughs> you know. And I said, and I said, I said, smooth. I said, I heard that you want to talk to me. He said, <laughs> he said yeah, coach. I said, no, man. I said, don't call me coach. I said, you had a coach. You know, you had a coach. You know, his name was Ricardo Patton. That's your coach. He was coaching him then. And I said, just call me LP. Okay. You know, I like that. Just call me LP. <laughs> and so he said, okay, that's cool, LP. He said, no, I want to I want to join you, you know. I said, why, you know. He said, I've been watching you from afar and for years since I was a little kid. And, and you're just doing some good stuff, and I want to be a part of that, yeah. you know. And I said, well, I'm coming up to Detroit playing your tournament with your coach. And I said, let's talk to him. So he said, okay. Let's let's talk. And so all of about 15 minutes, man, we we talked. And it was just about two or three things, you know, that I said. And and he said to me. And one of the things that I said, I said, now, if you join us, you're going to have to work. It's not going to be, you know, some pro athletes put their name on something. I was going to say, yeah. I said, no, dog. I said, you're going to have to work. Yeah. (laughs) You know, he said, okay. He said, I can do that. Worked all my life. Yeah. And so I said, that's cool. I said, that's good. I said, that's good. And we hugged. And then so and from, from, from that convo. That conversation. And then mm-hmm. so did, so tell us, like you said, some people might just think, yeah, he's got his name on there. Because, yeah. um, I, I, you know, I don't want to spill the beans. I've seen it in the flesh. I've, I've seen Chauncey there in the right. program. So like from when you, you had that conversation and then you were starting to build more now and like what is... Chauncey's contribution one has it been and then two has the impact been to the actual organization itself it has been awesome I told some friends uh some friends asked me said like said man why do why do you want Chauncey let Chauncey join you man that's 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 your legacy you know I said man I don't have a legacy I said have you lost your mind I said this is not about a legacy it's about helping people it's Hmm. about helping kids you know, I said, Chauncey can get into doors I can't get into. Mm. You know, as a team, we can reach out and touch and change a lot of lives. Yep. And that's exactly what I tell them. And that's what I would tell anybody that would ask me that question. You know, everything has been, you know, just taken off and just going and getting ground and getting higher and higher. Well, you know, because Chauncey yeah. came aboard. What's, what's kind of the greatest shift or moment 
you know, for the organization that you would say, like, is there something that stood out that when Chauncey came on board, you're like, wow, man, like, that is just amazing that that happened, you know, because now we're a partnership. Something maybe you didn't think was, it was even going in that direction, but it's like opened up different things for you. Just because it's Chauncey. Yeah. And, and you're talking, just like I'm here today. And talking to you on the, doing a <laughs> podcast, you know, <laughs> would I be here? Nah, possibly, possibly no. Yeah. Would I be here? But the exposure, people gravitate, and then they find out that it is a, a good product. Yeah, they find out that it is a good product. But Chauncey opened a lot of doors, and uh, the publicity, the national publicity, you know, that we received, you know, since he's been with us. And then when he's on, he's, he'll be on ESPN, and sometimes he'll mention, uh, you know, his foundation. Uh, his foundation, yeah. uh, PBLA. He'll tell he and Jalen will be uh, talking, <laughs> and he'll throw in. He says, "Yeah, just like my foundation, just yeah. like the PBLA," and yeah. that's national. National. That's on ESPN. Yeah. So, is it is it something now where, like, for 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 younger kids, people that are twenty five that are mm-hmm. are, are, are trying to make their way whether it be in a charity in the workforce or whatever it may be you know are are the power of having like key relationships and a good circle like how important is that um and having a good solid foundation personally so you can have those relationships like what kind of impact does that have um in someone's life networking networking Networking, networking, networking. <laughs> you know, the young people that we are building today, uh, we want them to, to they, they, they're, they're friendships, you know, forever. There's probably someone in your life where you went to school uh, when you were growing up and it was not a chance meeting, but you were in a group, an organization, just like the Denver Jets, networking that you guys are doing. And, you know, it opened doors. And sometimes, like, we have kids now that, like, there's a, um, an African-American kid that lives in Utah that's in the PBLA, okay? There's a white kid that lives in Colorado Springs. Now, both of them lived in Denver when they first started with us. But they come back, they have to be with us seven, eight years before we'll pay for that, uh, that scholarship, mm-hmm. okay? Now, those kids know each other. And so... The kid that lives in Utah, he comes back and he stays with the kid in Colorado Springs in the summer for three weeks. And they commute and come up to Regis to go to, to the PBLA. Wow. Now, you don't know what's going to happen with that relationship. 20 See, years from now. Right, 20 years from now. Yeah. Okay? Just like the, uh, with our uh, gala that's coming up January 26th, the key people that will be there will be... Julius Wilson, PBLA, graduated last summer from Columbia, magna cum laude. Okay, PBLA. Okay, yeah. he will be one of the guest speakers. And this, I'm going with the networking. Sure. You know, with this. Yeah. Now you have Chris Pride. I taught his grandmother at Manuel High School. Chris is now has his doctorate in nursing. He works in Atlanta. He's going to come up and be one of the speakers, okay? Monique Gonzalez will graduate in May with her doctorate in pharmacy, PBLA. These kids have been with us since they're eight, nine years old. Right. They're yeah. gonna be they're gonna be speakers. Now you go back to Chauncey, and also the guest speaker will be Dr. J. Yeah. Okay, Chauncey got him. I didn't get him. So, I I... so just so, so, so people understand, so, mm-hmm. They're starting PBLA when they're eight. Then they, they go all the way up to the age of 18, correct? Correct. So you're talking about people that are building already a foundation of a relationship for 10 years. Correct. And then they can go out. Like once you know someone for 10 years, I don't care if you know them from eight to 18 or 20 to 28. Like you know that person, you either know and trust them and you're going to work with them down the road in some form of capacity, whether it be directly or indirectly throughout the network that you, you're being a part of, basically, forever at right. this point. And they work together and they help each other. Right. And they know where, you know, from which they've come. 
That's, that's and they hang out together. They stay together. They communicate and they go, everything, all the technology that you young people have now, you know where, where everyone is. You know, on Facebook, you know where all the kids are. Even if you get separated, they know where, where everyone's at. So going, going through that and building a relationship, because my takeaway from that is just, and, and everyone can do this in every way, shape, or form, that they, it's just a mindset, right? Knowing that you need to build those relationships, knowing that you need to be around people who are on the same path as you, have the same positive attitude that are trying to grow and be successful in different areas of their life. Um, and there's actually a Harvard study, like actual facts that say you're an average of the five people that you hang around. And it's, it's actually <laughs> been a proven study that they said that they did. So, I mean, having a place that has a structured format for that learning and cultivating those relationships is going to definitely, as you said, and what you're doing is changing um, kids' directions and paths. Kids' that they directions and, uh, and changing lives. Yeah. And that, that, is, that is our goal. That is our goal. So, and through this model, uh, you know, also like the kids uh, that, that come that are selected, we have a recruiter that recruits the kids, mm -hmm. okay? And they are looking for kids, and I say this uh, very humbly, they're looking for kids that the model is based on my life, on me, okay? I was a C-plus student. Okay, a lot of the, I was right in that group that is overlooked, C plus B minus. Mm. Okay, we don't give much attention to that group. We give a lot of attention to the A's, and we give a lot of attention, and you know, to the to the guys that are that are in gangs. Yeah. But that group right there, they don't get much love. Yeah, they're the ones that's coasting <laughs> right, by normally. Right, right. They'll be all right. They're, right. they're passing. Right. You're, you're passing. Right. And pop, and could be even better if they have more support. Right. They can be even better grade wise if they have support. But the majority of your leaders come from that group. Wow. They are right there. They're right there. They're sitting right there because they have made it. They end up so-called making it in life on their own. Hmm. They what, don't have all the, all, all the help. What would you say is like going through all that and because you, you, you're seeing so many different walks of life, right? You're seeing all different types of children. You're dealing with all different um, family background dynamics, everything. What is probably, is there, is there one thing that is like, that is a, a takeaway where you're like, this is, this is the thing that they need the most, you know, what's the greatest thing that for you looking at a family at this point that that's not a part of your program, you know, what are the, some of the things that you would say that people need to implement at home to, to help push, they may not come to PBLA, but this is something that everyone should be implementing in their home for them and their children, um, or for them themselves. First, First of all, I would say love. I would say discipline. You don't need to be their buddy. You need to teach them right and wrong, the difference. Mm -hmm. And you need to make them get out and work to have a job and not give them everything. And it's old school. You just go back, you know, to that time, to those days, and stop giving them everything. You need to have disciplined them with the modern technology so that they're not consumed, you know, with that, you know. So you would say like a good, it, it, it would, it's lacking a little bit of structure. Now, the people need to well go put, back. Well put, well put. The word to, I'm to, searching for. It. Yeah, to have <laughs> some fine. structure. I think, yeah. I think a lot of times <laughs> these days we have access to so many things that it's easy to not have structure anymore because we can pass time um, without structure, you know, mm -hmm. there's always something that can entertain us for a while, or you can watch TV, or you can play video games, or you can, you know, just go and hang out and do nothing, basically. Right. But if you actually structure things, it, it helps. What I've seen is it, it allows you to be able to start thinking about and having those visions. It sounded like when you were early in your stage, you gave yourself that structure, and, and that's what helped you garner um, that vision and so doing that, would you say that opens up and helps people find opportunities then? It, you know, how do people see 
when they're going through life again if they're not being able to go through pbla how do they know to see opportunities when because it seems like that's something that people miss as well well i i think that uh, some people go through all of that and they never see it some people we have a few kids I would, i'd hate to say that they'll go through pbla is like i said it's very very structured so there's a lot of discipline there, and if they don't live up to those expectations, they're not invited back. Mm. And so, uh, so naturally, there are some kids that that we do lose, and that they would rather do something, do something else with their time, as opposed to coming to PBLA uh, for three weeks, you know, every week. But I just think that uh, hard work uh, and discipline just overcomes a lot of, um, you know, areas, barriers that uh, our kids face now. I wow. just think that, that just something, this pure is simple, like something magical, you know, uh, you won't find that, you know, at PBLA. Yeah, there's, there's no find, there's no magic. No, there's no magic formula. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If you, if you, you have uh, a magic wand in yeah, there. Yeah, there's some, uh, like, I said, like, well, you, uh, you'll put, you are, pushing my kid a little bit too hard. No, I'm not pushing him hard enough. Mm. You know, I'm not pushing him hard enough. You think I'm not, I'm pushing him hard. You wait till he gets out in corporate America. Yeah. You know, and you wait until he gets married and little Johnny can't have Christmas because he got fired because his father got fired. You know, I said, then who do you, who are you going to blame for that? Yeah. You know, for not pushing him hard enough. You know, uh-uh. so kids that have gone through PBLA now like a, a shining beacon because yes you're going to have the ones that don't see the opportunity but then there's the ones that see it thrive and absolutely explode into success like who is you know obviously I don't want you to there's no favorites <laughs> or anything but just give us like a story of somebody that went through the program and you're just like wow you know that amazed well, I've already given Everyone. you three. Who, I've already given you who, three. But <laughs> somebody who's who's going, who's there now, now just a recent story of of success. These are these are people that are, are older now. This is for a kid who's maybe in the program right now that's watching this, um, that's looking, you know, that that person is a far reach from where they're at. Talk to them about what they're going to see when they come through this program. You're going to see different kids. Uh, that have accomplished and overcome a lot of, um, of what's the word that I'm looking for? Obstacles. Adversity, and, yeah. obstacles, uh, uh, health issues. Uh, uh, I'm not going to tell you what kind of transplant one uh, you know one young person. I'm not going to tell you the gender sure. one young person had had a transplant and went through the program still went through the program uh finished it late went through the program we gave her you know special leave you know for a couple of years uh came back during that time is doing heavy lifting you know in college now i'm not gonna say which college she's going to i uh, gave the gender <laughs> but uh just just getting just A's and B's. Just getting A's and B's. And very active on campus. And you know, that is probably the most extreme and um you know, off camera I, I will tell you the rest of it, but sure. I don't wanna you know But there's people that no they they yeah. if they're in the program and they're and they're thinking, you know, they're going through so there's always like like life says there's always something going through right. worse than what we're going right. through so for you now is it is there ever this is even probably going to scare Lonnie is there ever a transition time where Lonnie's like I'm actually going to retire and or is this is this an ongoing thing forever where where do you see um, the program going and where and where would you where do you want it to go? Actually, is what I should say. You know, you you are 
the 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 master of the sailboat of what direction this goes in and you probably want you know more more things to happen i know you're a super ambitious individual um right. so what what, where, what direction do you see everything going in i'd have a few more years someday i will re- i will retire um you know that is that is for sure and uh but i have already planned my exit I know exactly when that is. Okay. And, uh, you know, but I will assure you that I will leave it in good hands uh, between uh, uh, Chauncey, and I can't, I can't sing his praises enough. You know, just like I call him and I say, smooth. Hey, man, I need to talk to you. <laughs> Get right back to me. <laughs> you know, then he'll, he'll, call, he'll call me or something and he'll say, you got rid of that flip phone, I see, you know, something like that. But uh, um, no, someday I'm going to retire. You got a I new wanna, phone? Is this, is, is this a new phone? Yeah, I think I, you I, had I, a flip like, phone the last time. Yeah, I know, I know, I know. I know. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, uh, no, I I will leave it in good hands, uh, you know, led by Chauncey and my daughter, uh, Stacy. They, they, they will have it. And that's why I am getting my board younger. Um, I'd like to cap it at 225 kids. And thank you for giving me that credit. I don't remember all of their names. I'm 75 years old. No, oh, you see, to but, me, it seems like you <laughs> yeah, called out a lot of names. I know, names of, when, when I know I their there. faces. Okay. I know their faces. Okay. I know their faces. <laughs> you know, and uh, so uh, everything, everything is going to be all good. Yeah. I'm going to cap it at 225. And then we'll go from there. I want to, I need, you know, quite a bit of uh, more, uh, more funds to get it to where I want to want to see it to go. And our curriculum is solid. We've, we've grown, we're growing. Now we, you know, we have STEM, we have robotics, uh, you know, all the modern things, uh, all the, uh, the leadership, the leadership things, you know, because I believe like in my philosophy is like, to, if you want to change the direction of the ship, okay, you don't talk to the sailors. You look for the captain. Hmm. And so we can change lives, generations, you know, through this program. We already have. Right. Already, already doing that. And, you know, peace and justice, human rights, all of these are things that we teach there. Uh, fly fishing, you know, partnership with Lincoln Hills. We're just, just growing. And, uh, you know, just, just more, more young people. I've always, I love and enjoy being around young people. Yeah. And, and uh, is it, so, is it something where, like, if, if there are young people that want to get involved um, and help out or volunteer, or you know, like, what, what, um, what steps are there and how can people get involved or donate that want to be a part of PBLA? Like, what does that, how, how do they do that? Go to our website. Okay. Go to our website, and all our information is there. Okay, and, and what's they the can website? Contact uh, porter billopsorg Okay, they can go to that and uh, and reach out and reach become out become like a volunteer. What what positions do you have? Like what what would their roles be? You know, a lot of people sometimes they're like, I don't have any money to donate. You know, is there mm-hmm. is there a volunteer where they can just give time Volunt- and you know they can give time, uh, but they're screen screened uh, because you know people. Uh, they'll say that they want to volunteer, and then they they don't show up. Sure, we have to we look at resumes. With that, they have to apply. Okay, to be a volunteer. Sure, uh, because the big worst thing. Remember when you were a little kid and you were uh, one teacher had promised you something, mm. and then that teacher didn't show up the next day. It's the worst thing, you know. And so you're like, hey, what's up with this? Yeah, you know. Uh, we don't, and uh, especially a lot of the kids are young too. They're impressionable. That that yes. type of stuff will stick with them, right? Um, if they have people that don't show, so you need. You're looking for committed individuals who really care about the youth and creating change within the community, right? And right. And is the program ever gonna grow to um, different states? So you know, is there any? Thing you mean else. franchise it? Yeah, like any, you know what is the on the on the growth of it when you like is there a plan where it's it's 
I know you said you're capping it at 225 or 250 here. Right. Is it is it growing any more than that outside of um, Regis, or is is this where you want it to be? And I want it to be housed uh, there. Uh, the thing that I don't like about the uh, about the franchising. You remember the um, the analogy of. Uh, you remember that restaurant that you really loved? The food was good. <laughs> yeah. It was really good. Okay. Okay. And then they franchised it. Yeah. And it was never the same. Okay. So you had to be careful with that. Yes. So I don't say that it's not, that's not possible, that that won't happen, mm -hmm. uh, but you have to be careful. V yes. How do, you, how do you do that? And is there going to be, who is going to be, step into the drill sergeant role, let's just say when you retire, right? Because the source is going to kind of change. Lonnie is the, the, the source and the drill sergeant in there. Is, there. is there a person there that you know once, I'm, once I step away? My prediction on that, that it will be a PBLA, a PBLA graduate. A graduate, a, a student that's gone through the program, that's seen it. And, and do you, have you got an eye on a couple of people? Or we're not asking for any names, but have you seen have you seen that spark anywhere where you're like, man, that that boy or girl could could run this joint? There are a few possibles. Okay, there are a few. Good. Possibles. Well, I won't keep you too much longer, sir. Oh, I'm um, good. I'm good. Is there is there anything that you want people to know um, that we haven't covered that is personal to you? Um, and because we're going to get people locally watching this, nationally watching this, um, just from your story and what you've gone through that you want to give back to the community. That is, uh, oh, uh, I was thinking about, you know, how do I feel about life? And, uh, you know, today, uh, you know, I came up with about you were asking me about being successful one of the last parting shots, and I, and I came over this with this. Dream about being successful, then work hard to accomplish that goal. After you get there, make sure you look to your left, to your right, in front of you and behind you, and hopefully you will see the multitude you brought with you along your journey. If there is no one there, you have to ask yourself, have I really been successful? In essence, help and bring along your fellow man. That's, that, 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 that is a great statement for closing and one that I actually live by. If you're successful by yourself, it's, you, you <laughs> didn't win, really. You really nah. didn't win. So no. thank you, sir, for your no, time. Right. Much, much appreciated. Like, I can't thank you enough for doing this and being here. Thank Everyone. you. Thank you, baby. Mr. Lonnie Porter. Thank you.